these slides, but I just this one seems like it's one that. Um, Yeah. I'll read it. What we did, just to give you an idea of what we did, is we lifted out sections from the contracts. So the top part, you'll see the article that you can find this in, the sections that you can locate the uh, verbiage. And then at the bottom, we made our FAC uh, recommendations on what we think are opportunities in this particular contract. The one, when you go and look through all the contracts, the one that you do not see the recommendations are, um, are in the school committee contract, or the school that's because we can still, we've vetted them out and um, discussing them with the school committee members. Um, so in this case, in section one, the, All right, can I just uh, start with a second? Because these yeah. numbering's off because of the added slide. So in the package that you have, it's on page 23, slide 45. I'm sorry about that. Um, in this, on this one, I'll just read through the bullets quickly so um, we're, all, we're all together on this. The sick leave shall be granted at the rate of 150 hours each calendar year. Accumulation is limited to 1,200 hours. Accumulated sick leave in excess of 1,200 hours shall be bought back at the rate of one hour for one. Um, section two, the town agrees to buy back an amount equivalent to 100% of such employees accumulated sick leave on the date of death or retirement, whether voluntary or involuntary. The day's pay shall be computed at the employee's regular daily rate on the date of his retirement or death. Our recommendations on this particular contract, and again, these are general recommendations and general observations, as Mike accurately says, we're not picking on any group, but we just see these as opportunities and passing them on to whichever committee um, is involved in decision making. Um, the FA FAC recommends to reduce the number of sick days, uh, of uh, sick day hours per year, uh, reduce the cap on accumulated hours, reduce the payback rate of one to one for accumulated hours in excess of the cap. Um, reduce the percentage paid for accumulated days on retirement or death. Set a rate of pay for each day based on, uh, based on rate of pay at time of accrual and establish a sick day bank for the benefit of the co-workers. And all of these, con all of the provisions on all the contracts are listed similar to this with the FAC recommendations on each contract. If I could, so I, I w would it be safe to assume that this will be your recommendations on the school, also? Yes, I mean there there are very similar provisions and they do they are common and I think we have a newer slide that just didn't make it in here with some of those provisions. Because well, I thought the idea was to get everything yeah, in line. Yeah, I think we had an old slide and that's why we, we, we uh, okay. but they are very uniform and they're consistent throughout. <coughs> Right out of the contract. Accumulated sick 
don't want to do it without you. We want to be part of it. And we ask the police, we're going to ask the fire, we're going to ask every town, uh, town <coughs> employees to participate with us. We meet every first and third Tuesday of every month, and our meetings are posted, and we welcome you to come so we can continue to have these discussions. Because we, what we're having a difficult time doing is trying to put a dollar value against what this says for the future. We're trying, we, what we're our goal is, and hopefully in a few months, we can help you project your budgets better than you've been able to project them in the, in the past. But when we read this stuff, we can't do it. It's, I don't know, Greg, if you have the ability, and God bless you if you do, uh, we, we're struggling with it. So that's the point I wanted to make on why we put all these in there. Even when you go look at the library, just take the library. This is new information for us. We didn't even know it exists, but you read it, and then you try to put your cost around that. Is it really set with reality? I'd much rather be reasonable here and then continue to fund our schools at the level we can fund them at so the kids can continue to go to school five days a week and continue to receive foreign languages and participate in sports programs and things like that. I think it's very important for us. Any more questions on this particular subject? I'm going to go into my closing comments then. Um, the charge is to help the town afford the services we enjoy today. And that's what we're trying to do. So I hope no one feels at home or in the audience tonight or even anybody in the board of selectmen that we're, we're stepping outside of the charge. Hopefully what we present you tonight will make you comfortable that we're looking in the right areas and if we're not, <coughs> calibrate us. Now's the time. Vector us off in the right direction if you feel like we're going off in the wrong direction. Uh, we request each department in town to establish a subcommittee <coughs> and join us. Come sit with us. Help us get through this process. Help us understand the data better. Uh, we can no longer wait until the budget process to address these shortfalls. Last year was so painful, and I'm sure it was a lot more painful for you than it was for me. I sat back here, and I was only here for at least 10% of the time. We really need to do this now. We're already behind the power curve for the next facility here. Um, I put up there the question, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. We can't address our budgets like we have in the past. We need to make the change tonight and going forward. And we need common goals. We need set schedules. We need deadlines. We need accountability. Words I very rarely hear come from the board that I hear come from other departments. We need to get this in place. We need to get writing. We need to stay committed to it. We need to have accountability. Because if we don't, we're going to fail. So I ask you to hold us accountable. Keep us focused on it. Yes, we're a volunteer group, but let me tell you, every one of my members have given 100% of their time, their free time to this, and we're going to continue to try our best to do that. And what we're asking in return is that everybody else do the same, because the results won't be good, and then I don't want to see employees get laid off. I don't want to see us go through what we went through <coughs> last year, and I don't want to see the school suffer anymore. Well, that's the conclusion of our presentation tonight. I think that's it. Can I, can I ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, the boy's not letting you off the podium. Yeah, right. We're not done with Joe's you. Joe's got a question. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mike, um, yeah, I, I, I can, I understand the passion that you and your group and everybody has for this. I mean, I, I guess I have a question for you. Is when would you, I don't want to say like to see, but when would you think some of this can be implemented. Are you, I mean, I mean, you're not really thinking all these changes would occur in one year, are you? Or, or are you? I don't know what your time think. Well, again, our expectation is yes, they could all be done in one year. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think you have to be a little more realistic than that. But reality obviously has to. Come yeah. In. I'd that, like to see it. Yeah. All happen in one year, and I think right. it can happen all in one year. But that's really a question that you should be asking yourself. You, where again? We're doing this on a charge that you set. We're going to collect the information. We're going to pre present, present it to you. We're going to continue to present it to you. From, probably from this point forward, we'll be presenting it to you more in writing. And then when you ask, want to ask us to come back here to present it more in a verbal, in a face-to-face -face exchange, we'll do that. But all the information we're going to present to you, it's really up to you to set the deadlines. Well, if, if I may, no, it's not. Because it is up to the collective bargaining agreements to set the timeline on this. Um, 
I, I just, I'm just being very honest with you, and I appreciate everything you've done. That's I'm not I'm saying this cannot happen, but you will not see this within one year. Yeah. I and can I almost that, guarantee you that. And I think then you need to make the charge to, to improve on that. You need to work with the collective bargaining unions to, to make the improvement. That's where I think it's your job and your responsibility, Mr. Vino, to fix that. Because we cannot afford to let it go another year, another two years. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand what you're saying, but I remember put reality hard. into everything you're I saying. I understand, but you and know what? If that's, you don't that's a strong take, word. But you have to take a firm action on this. You right. have to I understand. push I, what you've never pushed before. I understand what you're saying. Being a board of selectmen, <coughs> Mr. Delaney may be sitting there right now regretting that he ever made the decision. Because I think no, not yet. the board of selectmen <laughs> that we had in the years past are not going to be the same as what you're going to have to face going forward. We're in new territory. Today, you saw in the news, we're in new territory throughout this country. And you're in new territory because you don't want to see this town go into receivership. You could sit there in the back of an envelope right now. I give you a half hour, and I bet you in the back of an envelope, you could figure out, based on this, just some of the discussion we had today, where we're going to run into in 2011, how much money, how many people you're going to lay off. I could probably figure, I could already, I already figure it out. But I bet you could in a half hour. And it's not a pretty sight. We don't want to go there. I agree. I agree. If you work with us and you take that, that what you're saying, I know those hurdles exist out there, but we need you and the other board members to step up and let us help you work with those organizations, those collective bargaining units. Let us work with them. Let them let's bring them in. Let's communicate with them. Let's get them in here now. Let's start talking. Because they have to understand the challenges you're facing. And I, if they're reasonable people, because I can't assume anybody would just say that the reasonable thing is let people go and lay them off. I don't, I don't believe that's the case. Uh, Mike, uh, first of all, I, I would you know, sincerely want to uh, commend you and the yeah, entire we'll committee job. for tonight's presentation. But more so, uh, you know, the summer months are months where things get bogged down, uh, not much gets done. I really have to commend everybody for their efforts uh, through the summer. Mm. It, it's very difficult to, you know, keep an ongoing meeting every other week uh, during the summer months to pull all this data together. And, and you know, I appreciate this is a, a, a uh, update, a status report. There's clearly a lot more work to be done. Uh, I'm waiting to hear some of the ideas you might have run into associated with finding ways of increasing our revenue. I think you hit upon, you know, the. Uh, Wastewater uh, initiative is one that is, is not a short-term fix, but in the long term, we have to be looking toward that. We have to find ways of uh, selling that. You've raised some interesting thought associated with the split tax rate. Uh, uh, interesting thinking that's never come before. Obviously, there's a hurdle of selling an override in the middle of, of all of this if you were going to take advantage of, of that, but it is an interesting thought. Uh, so uh, I want you to know that I appreciate all of the effort, and uh, you know, I certainly uh, believe that it, it will be the board's initiative to, <coughs> to take these recommendations and vet them and determine which ones should be our priorities moving forward. And, and Joe's right, you know, uh, we, we have to negotiate contracts in good faith. Uh, the good news is that we have a bunch of contracts coming up for renewal which gives us the opportunity to present some of these ideas and see what can be negotiated uh, over the next year or so. Uh, but I think that's why Joe's concern of, well, you yeah. know, when you said, well, it can all be done in a year, and, and why he's thinking, <laughs> knowing full well what yeah. one has to go through to make right. those kinds of changes is, is uh, tempering it. I don't think he's uh, uh, trying to, uh, to say that negative way that I what know. you presented no, is no, not no, achievable. No, no, I didn't mean anything negative. I know you didn't, and no. I wasn't trying I, to be unrealistic. No, but I, I mean, I have to say, Bob hit the nail right in the head. not speaking on behalf of the fact, but as a resident, uh, things tend to get done very slow around me. They do. And so my goal was there, my response back was to keep the pressure on the board of selectmen, to keep the pressure on whoever has to be accountable to work with the collective body. best interest of the town and all the employees because we want the employees to stay and if there's an opportunity to go 